Uh, the regularly scheduled meeting of Los Angeles City Council's Planning and Land Use Management uh, Committee. We'll begin our proceedings today by calling the roll. Uh, yep. Uh, Councilman Harris Dawson. Present. Councilwoman Rodriguez. Here. Uh, Councilwoman Yaroslavsky. Here. Councilman Lee. Present. And Councilwoman Hutt. Here. That's our five members and a quorum, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. I'll also note for the record uh, that we're joined uh, by Mr. Mejia from the CLA's office, Ms. Rosales from the clerk's office, uh, Ms. Corasani from the city attorney's office, and our uh, fearless leader of our Department of City Planning, the one Mr. Vince Arbertoni. Uh, we'll start this meeting like we start every meeting by taking a public comment on agenda items. Our goal is to get to as many speakers as possible. We will we'll then move through the agenda one item at a time, hear staff presentations, appellants or applicants, and we'll vote on the items accordingly. Uh, before we ask that uh, the additional uh, rules for public comment are read into the record, I will uh, open it up to Department of City Planning or Council offices, uh, should there be any additional amendments or technical changes before we hear public comment. I do not see anything from planning staff. All right, nothing from planning staff going once, twice, and then three times uh, for council offices, we'll assume there are none uh, and go forward. And I'll ask uh, that we read the clerk, read the additional instructions for public comment into the record. Yes, thank you, sir. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 161 Six four four six six three one, and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. During public comment, city staff will call on members of the public by the last four digits of their phone number. By pressing star nine, callers raise the virtual hand to request to speak. Once the caller hears the last four digits of their phone number, an automated Zoom voice will ask the caller to press star six to unmute themselves when it is their turn to speak. Once the caller is ready to speak, they must state their name and the items they are calling to speak on. Failure to do so will result in the call being muted and subsequently disconnected. Appellants and or their representatives and applicants and or their representatives will be allowed to speak for a total of three minutes per side unless otherwise noted by the chair. Members of the public wishing to speak on one agenda item only shall have an opportunity to speak for one minute. Appellants and applicants will be given an opportunity to speak when their item is called. Each appellant and applicant has a total of three minutes to speak. An appellant can choose to have a single representative speak on his or her behalf or divide the three minutes among his or her team. Anyone else, including an attorney or project manager, wishing to speak on an appellant's behalf who does not do so during this three-minute period may offer a minute of public comment whenever the committee chairperson opens the public comment period for the meeting, which is usually at the beginning of the meeting. Therefore, we expect that appellants and applicants have the respective teams assembled and ready to present at the appropriate times today. Members of the public wishing to speak on more than one item shall state that and shall be allowed to speak for a total of two minutes. Failure to raise your hand to speak in a timely manner before the comment period for the item ends results in forfeiture of the opportunity to participate in public comment for the item. Mr. Chair, if I may for the record, a community impact statement has been submitted by the West Los Angeles Neighborhood Council for agenda item 11 in support of the matter. Madam City Attorney, please provide additional guidance on public comment. Adrian Corisani, City Attorney's Office. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through all the speakers. If you are not speaking on topic, or if we cannot tell whether you're speaking on an agenda item, you will receive one brief warning. 
If you do not immediately and clearly return to the topic, or if you continue to stray off topic and disrupt the meeting, you will forfeit the rest of your time and we will move on to the next speaker. You will be informed when your time is up. All right, with that, we will, uh, before we go to public comment, I wanna give another opportunity if there are changes or uh, amendments to be read into the record. There are, Mr. Chair, uh, as it relates to number five. So item five is a motion, Blumenfield, Krikorian Park, Yaroslavsky. It's directing the planning department and building and safety, along with the Department of Water and Power and the C city attorney to prepare a report with recommendations to streamline and improve the city's ground mounted solar permitting and approval process. Um, so the motion, the recommendation therein is to adopt it as amended and I will read the additional um, amended in, uh, recommendations, instructions. One, to direct the Department of Water and Power to include in the report uh, the history and background of the California Solar Rights Act, fo focusing on current and future solar in incentives, such as net energy metering, NEM, and the impacts on utility rates for low-income communities as access to solar energy increases throughout the city. The report should include recommendations that mitigate and provide options to absorb rate increases and costs related to solar energy systems. And two, to direct the Department of Water and Power to include in the report whether increasing access to solar energy will increase utility bills in the future. And programs uh, that impact the, the department and that the department can develop and implement to mitigate this impact and or state federal grants that can ab absorb any increases in costs. That concludes the additional uh, recommendations, Mr. Chair and committee members. Thank you so much, Mr. Mejia. With that, uh, we will go to public comment. Caller with the last four digits 4047, please press star 6 to unmute yourself and state your name and which items you're speaking on. Uh, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, I am commenting on, on agenda item number 9. Uh, 230035. And what is your name, sir? My name is John Caboli. Great. You may begin. I have one minute? Yes. Okay. I'd like to ask the uh, Plum Committee uh, a simple question. Two questions, actually. One, this is regarding this case. The applicant has misstated the fact that they have got the approval of the West Hill Neighborhood Council, which is contrary to the fact. Neighborhood, uh, West Hill Neighborhood uh, Council, written statement to ATC and also statement to this committee that they have reservation, they have comments or question or concern regarding this project. And apparently they have misstated the applicant that this, uh, they have the approval of the Westfield Neighborhood Council, which is not fact. Number two question that I have, if they do not, if they do not need approval of a neighborhood council, and they go over their head, and they go to the city uh, council, to the city planning, and get approval for their project, why, Thank you, Speaker. That's your time. You Caller with the last four digits, 2649. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Caller with the last four digits, 2531. Please press star six to unmute yourself.
Caller, I see that you've unmuted yourself. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah, good afternoon. I'm speaking on item eight. You may begin. My name is Gus Torres, and I represent UA Local 250 pipe fitters, welders, and apprentices. And we're, we're here to support the Main Street Tower project. With over 6,300 members, we are an organization that takes pride in our careers. Careers are exactly what we have, thanks to developers like Jay that used to do the right thing as they are on this project before you today, committing to hiring locally and hiring members of the skilled trade. We are supporting not just temporary construction jobs, but long-term careers. Couldn't be prouder to be working on a world-class project like this one. And all that is left is for, it, is, is for it to be approved. Start working on it. Please support the workers here today and please deny the appeals and approve the project. Thank you for your time and God bless. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the last four digits 1510, please press star six to mute yourself and state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hello, am I coming through clearly? Yes. Hello? Okay, wonderful. Um, my name is Victor Reyes and I'll be speaking on item number nine. I am here on behalf of VICA, the Valley Industry Commerce Association, and we are in full support of the proposed daily light project at Fallbrook Point. The community plan for each geographic area in Los Angeles identifies the appropriate location and zoning for a variety of uses intended to serve the local communities. The corporate point is the focal point for light industrial development as designated in Chatsworth Porter Ranch Community Plan uh, for the community. The Fallbrook Point light industrial proposal is consistent with the community plan and will limit use by the previous city approval. The need for light industrial buildings is unquestionable as demonstrated by the extremely low vacancy rates for such space and the community needs this development to allow for healthy and viable economic development. The owners have not sought to deviate from any, uh, in any way from the rules that are established for the property and have demonstrated uh, throughout environmental analysis that the proposed project will not have a significant impact on the surrounding environment. Thank For you, this Speaker, reason, FICA your urges your support. And Caller with the last four digits, 9398. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Thank you so much. My name is Shamari Davis. I'm a business rep with the Electricians Union here in uh, IBW Local 11 in Los Angeles County. And uh, I'm in full support of this project, representing over 8,700 members. Uh, and we support the Main Street Tower project, item number eight. I think it's a project that will do uh, much support to us, to the workers, and to all the skilled trade men and women uh, in every skilled trade. We must support good projects like this that work for the local skilled workforce and bring us all good wages and safe work sites, very important. We must support projects. And they allow us to train the next generation of skilled workers in our trade so that we can pass the benefit on to others to the next generation. We ask that you stand with us and deny the appeals. Thank you for your time. Caller with the last four digits, 5990. Please press star six to unmute yourself and state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Joshua Christensen. I'm speaking on item uh, number nine with the Fallbrook Point project. Uh, my name is, again, my name is Joshua Christensen. I'm a representative with the Southwest Mountain States Regional Council of Carpenters, representing 65,000 men and women in Southern California and surrounding states. Uh, we have many members that live and work in the area in the vicinity of this project. And I've expressed my support for this project as I believe that it will benefit the, uh, the environmental and local economy by practicing protocols that will protect worker health and safety and incorporate adequate environmental mitigation. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thanks.
caller with the last four digits 0973. Please press star six to mute yourself and state your name and which items you're speaking on. Good afternoon, commissioners and everyone on present today. My name is Omar Galindo, and I'm calling to speak on item number eight. I'm a representative of UA Timbers Local 78, and we are in support of the of the Main Street project. The city needs projects like this. This is an area of our city with lots of housing and built with quality assured. But how a project like this is built is not value neutral. In other words, it matters a lot how they are built and by whom. We members of the skilled trades are out on site every day making the buildings of tomorrow rise up. Major projects with us on the job get built right and we get fair pay and benefits when responsible contractors are chosen by good developers. This is a good project. Let's not delay. Deny the appeal and let's move this project forward. Thank you. Caller with the last four digits, 5180. Please press star six to mute yourself. Hi again, my name is Crystal Vicente and I live in downtown. At the last hearing for this project before the CPC, I spoke in strong favor of this project. I know a lot of people who actually live around here who also supported it and we still do. Basically, we have a businessman and his attorneys who don't want the project for reasons of self-interest. They oppose it. Let me be clear, the people who live around here see a building like this can go up and we want it. This area needs more housing, a lot more housing. Please listen to us and not those who speak from their corner offices. Thank you. Caller with the last four digits 9036, please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Uh, my name is Godfrey Ashira with Creed LA, speaking on item number eight. You may begin. Can, you can, okay, okay. We support staff recommendation to deny the appeals and sustain CPC's determination. All along the process, there's been overwhelming evidence in support of the Main Street project. And we hope that the committee will continue to reject an imaginary hotel coming in the way of real progress. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the last four digits, 3353. Three. Please press star six to mute yourself and state your name and which items you're speaking on. Good afternoon, Marie Rumsey with Central City Association. We are pleased to voice our strong support for item eight regarding 1123 Main Street. Main Street Tower will add substantial new housing in a walkable area close to jobs and transit, a key piece to addressing our housing and sustainability goals. This project will also create good jobs. This is a welcome project from a developer who has demonstrated a long-term commitment to downtown LA's future, including developing another project across Main Street on the same block and rehabilitating the nearby Harris Building on 11th Street. Importantly, all of these projects have been designed with consideration for activating the public realm and fostering a connected, pedestrian-friendly environment. We are excited for this project and ask for your support as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Speaker. So we've got uh, 21 people in the queue for uh, to speak. Uh, so we're going to allot about 25 minutes more and we'll close public comment at this time. So if you haven't called in, we won't be taking any new callers. Uh, additionally, I wanted people to know that the chair uh, will recommend and ask that we continue item number two. Uh, so for folks looking at that item, just know that they, there is the uh, intention to continue that item to a later date. Caller with the last four digits, 0336. So, so Councilman, sorry to interrupt you. For item two, the item is, um, we need to take a vote to continue it to March 21st, 2023, sir. All right, do you need to call the roll to, to do that? Yes. Okay. Uh, Councilman Harris Dawson. Yes. Councilwoman Ro Rodriguez. Aye. Councilwoman Yaroslavsky. Yes. Uh, Councilman Lee. Aye. And Councilwoman Hutt. Yes. 
That's by members and uh, that item is continued to March 21st. Excellent. So item two has been continued and uh, we will continue for uh, 25 minutes with uh, public comment. Thank you. Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Jason Diaz and I'm calling in regards to item eight. I'm a resident just south of here. I've been excited to follow this project and I will continue to follow it. It's an exciting project to see in this area. So much housing and we need all of it. That's an item appeals and approve it so we can get this thing going. Please support this project and thank you for your time. Thank you, speaker. Caller with the last four digits, 9313. Please press star six to mute yourself. Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name is Nicole Flasati. I'm a resident in the neighborhood speaking on item number or number nine. I just want to ask a couple questions. We've gone through this many times. I don't understand how um, short-term worker interest should trump uh, the people who have lived and invested in this community for over 40 years, the people who live there, who have already respiratory issues, how can you, who will protect us from the 45 extra truck, truck trips a day that are going to, that are estimated by the developer that are going to be there seven days a week, going through our residential neighborhood. This is largely a residential neighborhood. Industrial does not serve the community, uh, uh, part, despite what a previous caller said. I don't know how it's going to be walking into an industrial building, even a small industrial building from a member of the community. Who will defend us? Who will protect our air quality? Who will protect our quality of life? This is a project for somewhere else, not in the midst of a residential community. I beg the city and the governance um, board to reconsider Thank you, Speaker. That's your time. To deny... Caller with the last four digits, 5572. Please press star six to move yourself. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Doug Summers. I proudly represent UA Local 709 Sprinkler Fitters. We are here to lend our support to the Main Street Tower Project, item eight. This developer has pledged to work with responsible, skilled, and trained contractors who will pay fair wages, ensure benefits, and on the job training for apprentices in the trades. With those commitments, we see a good project with plenty of opportunity to show off our skills. So please vote to deny the appeals and support this project. Thank you. Caller with the last four digits, 4331. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ray, and uh, I'm going to be speaking on item number eight. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioners. I'm Ray, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Anchor Church of downtown LA. You know, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28, it says, Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. As the body of Christ, we recognize the importance of the work that, project, that projects like this provide for our, congreg for our congregates. And those finances help us to meet the needs of the hurting within the community. Please approve this project. Thank you and God bless you. Caller with the last four digits 2800. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Good afternoon. Hello and thanks for the opportunity to speak. My name is Rick Garcia and I'm speaking on item eight. I'm speaking as a member of Smart Local 105. We are here to speak in favor of the Main Street Tower Project. I'm here to represent all members of my organization. I'm here to let you know we fully and completely support this project. Developer is choosing to work with qualified and responsible contractors who will guarantee us workers the things we need to support ourselves and our families with fair wages and more. Further, this developer is investing in our city proposing something this big and consequential in one of LA's neighborhoods that needs it the most and where it will fit in great. Please join us in supporting the project. Deny the appeals. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker.
caller with the last four digits 3906. Please press star six and mute yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, good evening and afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'm Miguel Castellon and I'm speaking today as a proud member of Local 433. We strongly support item number eight, the Main Street Tower project before you. This is a worthy project and adding more <clears throat> of what we need in the city. Housing, no two ways about it. I'm all for it and I know we need it. It's especially good that we can be part of this, its construction then. For me personally, and as a member of the building trade, it's also important that we, uh, the applicant has a clear plan for including the skilled trades hiring local, locally and the, the extension providing the last lasting benefits to the hardworking men and women of the trades of Los Angeles. Please vote to deny the appeal. Thank you. Caller with the last uh, good four afternoon, digits. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Samuel Nieto. Like other nearby residents, I'm here in support. I think it's good residents like me and some others I know are here. I listened to the last one, but I couldn't speak. I wish I had. I hear another baseless appeal is holding this up. Come on now, this is a, a lot of housing and we need housing. Let me just say everyone around here supports this project. Everyone I've talked to approving this project, please. And thank you very much. Have a great day. Caller with the last four digits, 7841. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. My name is Ira Jacobs. I'm speaking on item number nine. I object to this project to build three warehouses at Corporate Point in West Hills. West Hills is not an industrial warehouse area and does not deserve <clears throat> to have this intrusion brought upon its residents. These proposed warehouses bring harm and nothing of benefit to the residents of West Hills. While building warehouses at Corporate Point may be very profitable, it does not necessarily make it right to develop this property. With the actions we've taken to date, we feel like David fighting Goliath. It appears now that our battle is to have you, our council persons, support us as your constituents as opposed to supporting big business. We do not need more warehouses to turn the San Fernando Valley into another Inland Empire. Please take the appropriate action on our behalf to halt this intrusion. I have lived in West Hills for 42 years, and we moved to this beautiful community to be away from heavy traffic, freeways surrounding the San Fernando Valley. We enjoy the fact that we are not near any freeway. Little did we know that corporate points had been severely polluted due to various aerospace companies that own the property Thank you, speaker, over the years. That's your time. This pollution has had an Caller with the last four digits, 1038. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Again, caller with the last four digits, 1038. Please press star 6 to mute yourself and state your name and which items you're speaking on. Caller with the last four digits, 4821. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, Pastor Zach here with Cree LA speaking on item number eight. You oh, may man, begin. begin. Uh, so we, first and foremost, we support the project and we're going to ask that you deny the appeal. And I just want to take a second to focus on some of the features. A 30-story tower with 363 apartment units provides a ton of jobs. And jobs are essential to our economy. Right now, as we're looking at the potential of a recession, it's very important that we provide not only these jobs, but we look at what it does in, in the surrounding area uh, for the people that are on the ground and, and the opportunities that it creates. There, there are so many things that it blesses and benefits the community. Not only that, but even in providing the housing for the intended demographic, it alleviates the downward pressure on the city's renter pool. 
and thereby supporting our current housing priority as stated by Mayor Bass in our state of emergency declaration for homelessness. So considering that there is an immediate positive impact there on Main Street, the building itself, the, the impact that it creates in the nearby economy, and then the importance of Thank that you, area Speaker, in a more time. general sense. Caller with the last four digits, 1115. Please press star six to meet yourself and state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hi, this is uh, Jay Ross. I'm the secretary of the West Los Angeles Sawtell Neighborhood Council. I'm speaking on item number 11, which is the uh, six story apartment at 2456 Purdue Avenue. Our neighborhood council supports the appeal and opposes the project. Um, we proposed a compromise in our resolution, which I sent to you guys. It will still allow a large project that will provide affordable housing, but it makes the project more livable and to fit in with the neighborhood. The project should be revised so the fifth and sixth stories have 10 foot setbacks in the rear, because right now the neighbors behind them, they face a six story, um, a six story sheer facade right along their backyard. Also real trees should be planted. Uh, we say four 36 inch box trees should be planted in the dirt not in planters or um, pots where they, they're they basically twigs and they can't grow. So if the building needs to be pushed back or have uh, notches to plant real trees and dirt and the garage needs to be shrunk for these trees, that should be done too. Uh, we'd also like to see EV chargers installed in 10% of the spaces and stubbed for 25% of the spaces. We'd like to see one street lamp installed and parking permits are inactive for the block. Um, the project's residents for this new apartment, they should be prohibited from receiving them. This is a TOC project and they're given bonuses because people aren't gonna be driving, so they're not gonna need permits to park on the street. Um, our neighborhood has a problem with uh, early starts, with dust, with noise. We ask that the DBS assign a real full-time inspector with a real name and a real number posted on a big sign, because right now most developers don't post those little tiny permits that don't really have any info either and what? you can never get a hold of a DBS inspector when these uh, violations are happening, especially on weekends. Probably. It's just getting worse because Caller with the last four digits, 4413. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Great. My name is Alex, and I'm a member of LIUNA, which stands for the Labor's International Union of North America. And I'm speaking for item number nine. Uh, and more importantly, I'm speaking in support of item number nine, and not just the project, but of the developer. The developer is committed to using the best of the best when it comes to building, which is workers that come from a state accredited training facility to make sure that everything on the project is going to be held to the highest standards of safety and responsibility. Um, and I think when responsible developers partner with the best builders, the safest builders, it's a great thing for any area. So I hope that the everybody in the surrounding areas can see the good in it and not just the bad and i hope that we can deny this appeal and get some approval and get to work as soon as possible and build something nice for the city thank you so much for your time and god bless caller with the last four digits 8805 please state your name and which items you're speaking for Hi, yes, this is Charlene Rothstein with the West Hills Neighborhood Council. We sent over uh, a 25 page submission in opposition to the project as it stands. Uh, I hope you've all had a chance to see it, especially the last page was, which I labeled Exhibit A, and it will show you that this proposal is right in the middle of a completely residential area and um, we have uh, probably currently a petition with over 550 signatures of the uh, residents that would be most affected by this who are against this project as it stands. Uh, we support the RFNC 
they uh, submitted a letter to us on March 1st. Uh, it is a letter that's going to, or, or went to Rob Bond, to the Attorney General uh, for the State of California Department of Justice, who handled a very similar case, a trucking company that was environmentally affecting uh, a neighborhood. And uh, he, they, that office did win that case. So we don't want to look at that in the future. Um, thank you, Speaker. The that's developer your time. Does, okay. Thank you. Caller with the last four digits 2350, please press star 6 to unmute yourself and state your name and which items you're speaking on. Good afternoon. My name is Cameron Benji, and I'm speaking on item number 8. I'm one of the owners of the property abutting this project directly across the alley from the proposed tower. Applicants design as proposed severely impact the project which has been approved as a 139 key highest branded hotel. There are shade and shadow concerns, as well as blocking of the views, and not to mention potential noise issues. We have reached out multiple times to the applicant, requesting that they accommodate us by moving their tower slightly to the north. Applicant has been unwilling to work with us, and we've had no choice but to challenge the project. To be clear, we are not entirely against the project. Should the applicant agree to move their tower by a few, near, near a few hundred feet, we are willing to withdraw objections and future legal challenges. Considering that the applicant owns almost the entire block, this would have absolutely no impact on the project. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you, Speaker, your time. Caller with the last four digits, 8132. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Yes, good afternoon. Charlie Fisher, and I'm calling regarding item number one. I'm also representing the Highland Park Heritage Trust, and we fully support this project. Um, it would be the first standalone mural in the city of Los Angeles to be declared a monument. Uh, other murals that have been parts of, uh, included with other nominations, have been declared but this one would be the first one. It has been an icon in the area of Highland Park for many years, and uh, the artist has made sure that it's been maintained over the years um, with funding. And um, I know the artist, the principal artist on this particular one. Uh, he is, I believe, listening in here right now. And uh, we fully support, I worked with Kathy on the mural on getting it declared, and uh, we want to see that done. And thank you very much. Caller with the last four digits, 7140. Please press star six to unmute yourself and state your name and which items you're speaking on. Uh, good afternoon, planning commissioners, Bill Quisenberry, Labor's Union, Lyona, speaking on item nine. Our organization is fully supportive of this project. Uh, we are 100% certain that there is no underground economy going to be employed on this project, meaning that there will be no cash pay, there will be no compromise, workers' compensation issues going on. And uh, along with the skilled trade workforce, uh, we are 100% confident that uh, it will be built safely and efficiently where the developer and owners will make a good return on their investment. Uh, I could also state that there will be, uh, you know, local hire. We have many members there in the community. We have 8,400 members from local 300 laborers right there in the Los Angeles area. So this is a good community project. And uh, with the fact that- uh, Thank you, Speaker, that's your time. Contractors that we've Caller with the last four digits, 1038. Please press star six to unmute yourself and state your name and which items you're speaking on. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to speak today. My name is Jason Baez and I'm co commenting on item number nine. I'm a proud member of Labor's Local 300 and I fully support the Fall Book 
Point Project because I am one of over 12,000 members of my union located here in Los Angeles County. We depend on projects like this to provide a stable living for our families and keep food on the table and pay all our bills. We also must accumulate 300 working hours per quarter year in order to keep our health care benefits active. And me as a father of four children and a husband, I depend on these benefits to protect my family, as many union workers do here in Los Angeles. We are counting on your leadership to protect us, your neighbors, who are honest taxpaying citizens, many of which are active in our communities. When we take our oath to become members of our union, we pledge to be active in community affairs. I myself you, Speaker, participate that's your time. in food drive, immigrant assistance. Caller with the last four digits, 7846. Please press star six to mute yourself and state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Do you want me to introduce myself? Yes, please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Yes, my name is Martha D and I'm speaking against item number 12. Um, good afternoon. I'm a 12-year resident of Cobalt Street, which is adjacent to the Puck Educational Complex in Silmar. It's on Glen Oak. Um, my neighbors and I have met and would like to request this committee consider certain things when looking at the proposal um, of the Puck Educational Complex. And we'd like you to consider um, denying their expansion or their proposal to expand their student body and hours of operation and to rent their facility. Um, please consider that this educational complex is made up of three schools and that many of our homes share a wall with the school. It's a unique situation since most schools have a street that goes all the way around a school and that buffers noise and parking issues. Uh, we have a high noise level at various times of the day from six in the morning till night till weekends and Thank expanding you, Speaker, the hours of operation. Caller with the last four digits, one, six, three, five, please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hello, my name is Renee Jacob. I am a member of the Roscoe Fallbrook Neighborhood Coalition and we are against the building of warehouses at Corporate Point Business Park. The Chatsworth Porter Ranch Community Plan states that the QM1 zone classification is permitted on those properties fronting on the following corridors. One, the north and south side of Nordoff Street between DeSoto Avenue and Topanga Canyon Boulevard. Two, the east side of Topanga Canyon Boulevard from Nordoff Street to the south side of Lassen Street. Three, the south side of Lassen Street between between Topanga Canyon and DeSoto Avenue. They have set aside approximately 1,821 acres of land for industrial use to preserve this valuable land resource and from the in intrusion of any other development, the high quality industrial uses is to keep with the urban residential character of the community. To extend the possibility. Thank you, Speaker. That's that your time. Hello, caller. What item are you speaking on? Catherine Score. Please indicate what item you're speaking on. Hello? Hello? Yes, hi Catherine, what item are you speaking on? I'm, I'm the appellant on item 11. I was wondering if I also just get one minute. Um, as the appellant, do I get more? There's no. You get uh, time when we come to that item and you'll you'll get uh, three minutes at that moment, but not now, thanks. Okay, sorry, so sorry.
Ian Afazeli, what item are you speaking on? Ian Afazeli, are you speaking on any items besides item 9? Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Are you speaking on any items besides okay. items 9? Yes. Item, uh, um, I'm going to tell us item 9, but I want to use the public comment as well, if that's okay. Sure. You may begin. Okay. So item 9. Um, we submitted uh, an attachment for our not, appeal both in January uh, sir, and also yesterday. I'm sorry. It's not in the document, which is very uh, useful. Hold on, hold on. I've been living in West Hill. Adrian Corisani, City Attorney's Office. Your time to speak on that item will be when the time when that item is called. If you have an additional comment on another item on it's the It's an agenda. additional comment. I was no, getting to my on additional another, comment. Uh, so which item on the agenda are you speaking on, aside from item 9? Item 9. Item 9. You can item speak on item, item 9, 9 when item 9 is called. Okay, I'm not speaking, I understand it, but I'm, this is a public comment, and I'm, uh, I'm allowed to do uh, an actual public comment. I'm, I live in this area. Right, is if you're okay going to be for item yeah. 9, you're going to speak during that time. Thank you. I can't you only, speak. You, you can only use that I can't, public, wait, wait. You can only use a public comment wait. for an additional item uh, other than 9. You cannot speak on 9 twice. I'm not going to talk about, so th that's a different thing. Um, what I'm going to speak on about item nine. So, in so my if you're on item nine, let's move thing. to the next caller. Caller with the last four digits, one, six, one, three. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Good. Okay. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Jose Rodillo, and I am a pro union member of Laguna, and I am speaking on item nine, and I am in full support of this project moving forward. This project will create necessary jobs for the community. It will provide work for work for the for our skilled and trained workforce, and it will give our apprentices the hours that they need to become journeymen. I fully 100% approve of this project moving forward. I implore you to support this project also. Um, and I just, I, I just ask you to uh, just uh, uh, support us. Um, thank you for your time. Mr. Chair, that concludes the time allotted for public comment and there are no more speakers on the queue. All right, thank you to everybody who called in. Uh, we have a hefty agenda today, so we want to move expeditiously. First item on our agenda, uh, Mr. Mejia, is item number one. Uh, yes, Councilman. Item one is a categorical exemption in a report from the Cultural Heritage Commission to include a mural, Tenochtitlan, the Wall that Talks, located at 6029 through 6039 North Ferro Street in the list of historic cultural monuments located in CD1. Uh, all right, if there's no one here from uh, CD1 uh, and there are no discuss questions or discussions, I'm uh, gonna recommend that we uh, approve this inclusion. Any uh, discussion or reports on this item? All right, um, just uh, for the good of the record, I want to call on uh, the uh, Department of City Planning, Melissa Jones, on this item. Uh, yes, good afternoon, Chairman Harris Austin, members of the committee. I'm Melissa Jones with City Planning's Office of Historic Resources. And before you today is the recommendation from the Cultural Heritage Commission to designate a mural, the Tenochtitlan, the, mural, the wall that talks as an historic culture monument. The subject mural is painted on the east-facing facade of the commercial building located on the northwest corner of North Avenue 61 and North Figueroa Street in Highland Park. 
It depicts empowering images of Mesoamerican and Chicano historical figures, places, and cultural traditions as a source of empowerment to combat the long history of negative images of Chicanos portrayed in the media. Completed in December 1996, the mural was designed by the Mural Arts Collective Quetzal Cut Waddle Mural Project, which took inspiration from the loss of Daniel Robles, the best friend of one of the principal visionaries of the mural, Anthony Eagle Ortega, to gang violence in 1995. The Cultural Heritage Commission found that the subject mural is significant exemplifies significant contributions to the broad cultural, economic, or social history of the nation, state, city, or community for its association with the national resurgence of the Chicano movement in the 1990s in response to racial and socioeconomic injustices the Latino community is, it was experiencing. It is also significant for Chicano's contributions to the prolif prolific period of public art that made Los Angeles a global cultural engine in the 1990s. This concludes my report. My colleague Lambert Giesinger and I are here and available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, now I'll call on the applicant. If, or, the, or the applicant's representative for three minutes or less. Jade Puga or Richard Montes. Jade Puga, please press star six to unmute yourself. Hello, this is Jade Puga. Um, I prepared the application with Richard Montes on behalf of Avenue 50, um, Kathleen Gallegos. And we ask that you uh, support this, uh, the Tenno Street Law and the Wall That Talks as a historic cultural monument. Um, it is of high artistic, cultural, and historical value. And the community of Highland Park has supported this mural throughout the years. They have rallied. Um, with uh, the artist to continue to keep the mural alive. And it has uh, the full support of Avenue 50 and the community of Highland Park. Thank you, speaker. All right, now we'll Thank go you. to our, uh, the owners of this property. for three minutes or less. The owners are not on the line, Mr. Chair. All right, uh, Attorney Khorasani, uh, is it okay for us to move forward on this? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll consider it. Okay, uh, do we have a representative from Council District 1? All right, we don't see any representative from Council District 1. Uh, with that, I'll recommend that we approve the inclusion of this uh, mural uh, and ask Mr. Mejia to read the specific instructions to the record and call the roll. Uh, yes, as you stated, Mr. Chair and committee members, to approve the inclusion of the mural Tenochtitlan, the wall that talks, located at 6029 through 6039 North Figueroa Street in Highland Park in the city's list of historic cultural monuments. I will call the roll. Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Ms. Rodriguez, one more time. Aye. Ms. Yaroslavsky. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Hutt. Yes. That's uh, five members and it, it carries approved, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mejia. We've done item number one. Um, I will request uh, from the committee that we take items number three, four, five, and six. That is three through six or three, four, five, and six uh, on consent. Uh, and uh, if there's no discussion, uh, Mr. Mejia, I'd ask that you just read a summary into the record uh, with any additional instructions and I'll call the roll on those consent items. Uh, yes, so for number three, it's a categorical exception from CEQA as a Cultural Heritage Commission report to include the Watts City Hall and Engine Company number 65 uh, located in CD15 as a historic cultural monument. Item number four is a motion by uh, Councilwoman Yaroslavsky Krikorian instructing the Department of Building and Safety to prepare a report within 60 days with recommendations 
that provides an update to its 2018 report, uh, which provided an update on the progress of the mandatory soft story and non-ductile concrete retrofit programs. Uh, recommendation is to adopt that motion. Uh, item five is a motion Blumenfield, Krikorian, Park, Yaroslavsky, uh, asking and directing planning, building and safety, and the Department of Water and Power and the city attorney to prepare a report with recommendations to streamline and improve the city's ground mounted solar permitting and approval process. The recommendation therein was also to adopt and with the amended language that was read into the record at the beginning of today's meeting. And item uh, six, another cultural heritage item, uh, the categorical exemption for CEQA. It's uh, nominating, including rather, the Cun House 2, located at 7943 through 7947 West Fairholme Drive in CD4 as a historical culture monument. Recommendation therein is to approve that inclusion. Um, so I will call the roll for items three, four, five, and six, which are being recommended uh, to be either adopted or approved for inclusion as a historic cultural monument. Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Aye. Ms. Jaroslawski. Yes. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Hutt. Yes. Those are uh, five members and unanimous approvals, Mr. Chair and committee members. Thank you so much. That takes us to item number seven. Item seven, sir, is a communication from the mayor relative to appointment of Ms. Monique Lashi to the city planning commission for the term ending June 30th, 2024. Excellent. Uh, if we, I believe we have a candidate on the line now. I'll uh, just uh, open this discussion by uh, asking you to introduce yourself uh, briefly and uh, let us know why, uh, what excites you and makes you so passionate that you're willing to, to volunteer your time uh, on behalf of the uh, 4 million men and women of the city of Los Angeles. Well, thank you. Good afternoon, um, council members, and, and thank you for, uh, for letting me take a few minutes. My name is Monique Lachey. I have been a resident of Los Angeles since 1988 when I came here to attend the MBA program at, at UCLA. Um, fully intending to go into real estate development and ended up uh, becoming a commercial real estate lender due to the recession at, at that time. Um, spent a few years in commercial lending. And if, if you understand uh, a developer spirit and a banker spirit are not the same. So I left the bank and joined a then uh, sort of fledgling nonprofit development company in Los Angeles called a community of friends, uh, initially as a project manager to uh, help that agency uh, um, uh, develop its mission of permanent supportive housing for adults with mental illness. Um, for me, it was an education way beyond uh, business school. I learned the business of uh, developing affordable housing uh, in Los Angeles using uh, multiple resources. So that was, uh, and, and incorporating social services for the residents um, that we built permanent housing for. Uh, that was a wonderful experience, probably the best um, of my career experiences. But I, I left after 10 years and I joined up uh, with the guy who had a vision to uh, acquire affordable housing and preserve it across the country. So I was able to take my, uh, my skill in, in development and affordable housing and service enriched housing and, and translate that into a national platform. Um, I was with GHC Housing for the past 20 years. Um, I should say that my successor at a community of friends who I'm, I'm happy to say is still there, Dora Gallo, is, has taken care of baby and, um, and, and done wonderful things with the organization. In the meantime, I directed acquisitions for GHC Housing and we acquired uh, several thousand units in, in uh, over 20 states in the country and, and, and operated that. And so I recently retired um, from GHC about uh, almost a year ago and was um, surprised and, and pleased to, um, to uh, 
get some attention and, and be nominated to be a planning uh, commissioner. I, you know, obviously um, have spent a lot of time in real estate, have spent some time uh, developing housing in the city of Los Angeles and am still in touch with many of my colleagues who, uh, who develop housing uh, in particular and, um, you know, concerned like we all are and, and interested in how I can uh, contribute to an expedited process of, of both getting housing done, but also, um, you know, being attentive to the other needs of the city in terms of development. So I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you so much. Uh, truly appreciate uh, hearing your story and uh, your passion for the city. Uh, do we have questions, comments, discussion from other members of the committee? All right. Uh, I think you made it plain with your uh, with your story. Uh, uh, if there's no further discussion, Mr. Mejia, I'll uh, move, enthusiastically move that uh, we send this to the full council uh, for a vote uh, right away. Okay. Okay. So I will call the roll, Mr. Chair, as to yes. the approval of Ms. Luce as a city planning commissioner. Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Aye. Ms. Jaroslawski. Yes. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Hutt. Yes. That's five members and unanimous, Mr. Chair. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Lachey. Look forward to calling you commissioner. Um, that moves us to item number eight. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Item eight, uh, sustainable communities, environmental assessment, ASKIA, uh, the associated addendum, related CEQA findings, a mitigation monitoring program, mitigation measure than a report from the Planning Commission relative to the approval of vesting, mass, vesting tentative track map to merge eight lots into one master ground lot for the construction of a mixed use building that will contain 363 residential units. Uh, there are two appeals that have been filed, one by Cameron Benji from the United Broadway LLC and two by Supporters Alliance for environmental responsibility. The project is situated at CD14. Hello, all right. Um, we have a report from the Department of City Planning. Uh, good afternoon, this is Jane Choi with City Planning. Uh, the item involves two second level appeals of a track map for a new mixed use project located at 1123 South Main Street in downtown. In October 2022, the CPC adopted a SCIA as revised by the addendum, partially denied the first level appeals and sustained the advisory agency's decision to approve a track map for the merger of eight lots into one ground lot in a hall route, as well as the ZA's uh, decision to approve the transfer of less than 50,000 square feet of floor area uh, to allow a floor area of 7.03 to one FAR in lieu of six to one. And as I plan review, um, the CPC's partial grant of the appeals uh, was to accept the applicant's request to modify one of the conditions related to the parking requirement under AB 2097. Um, the appeal points, which were the same as the first um, appeal um, and were responded to during the CPC's deliberation related to the intensity and design of the proposed buildings and environmental impacts. The appellants did not submit any uh, substantial evidence into the record demonstrating that the project will have significant impacts that cannot be mitigated. All of the appeal points have been addressed in the detailed staff recommendation report to CPC, which um, have been uploaded to the council file and a staff response letter is available on the council file as well. Um, staff recommends that council deny the appeal and sustain the appeals and sustain the decision of the city planning commission and we are available for any questions. Thank you so much. Uh, we have uh, one appeal. Um, from Cameron Benji, who we'll hear from now for three minutes or less. Good afternoon, this is Cameron Benji, and I, as I stated during the public um, speaking time, uh, we are not against this project entirely. We are asking that- uh, Yeah. All right, well, call what? Sorry, we had a technical difficulty. Please proceed and uh, so we can restart the time. 
So, as I said, we are not entirely against uh, the proposed project. All we are asking is that they be accommodated by moving their tower, a 30 some odd number of stories high, uh, by near 200 feet. Is that too much to ask? Uh, is, that, is that unreasonable? I don't think so. I, I don't think that's unreasonable. We understand that, that the city needs additional housing. Um, and we certainly would like to see this project happen as well, but I don't think that the city should completely ignore our request and to the detriment of our project, uh, go ahead and approve this project um, and, and, and just ignore all of our claims. Thank you. All right, uh, we have an additional appellant to Supporters Alliance for Environmental Responsibility. They'll be uh, able to give testimony for three minutes or less. Good afternoon, honorable council members. This is Matthew Hayden, Hayden Planning, land use consultant here on behalf of my client, United Broadway LLC, the appellant in case item for our case item number eight. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I'll be brief and straightforward. My client opposes the design of the proposed project. And the reason is simple. The proposed project will impact my client's property, which is a directly across from the subject property. The project will cast uh, shade and shadows, block views, and have environmental impacts that were not properly addressed in the project SCIA. I'm gonna focus my comments on the vesting tentative tract map. Subdivision is about ensuring proper infrastructure for a project. And in this situation, there's one sufficient, uh, significant deficiency uh, in the tract design and one proper improper finding of the approval being made. The tract design, the project site is served by a substandard north South Alley that's only currently 12 feet. The Bureau of Engineering requirement is for 20 feet. And the project will only widen the alley by four feet on its half, so the alley will continue to remain substandard. And in fact, it will always remain substandard because there's an historic building at the north end that constrains the alley so that it can't be widened. The Deputy Advisory Agency erred in its consideration of this approval, and I think it's based on a false Bureau of, Engin under Bureau of Engineering understanding of the alley. Condition F. 3I3 indicate the 20 foot alley, which is incorrect. Second, with re the regard to track finding D, the deputy advisory agency found that the site was suitable for the proposed density of the project. And this is incorrect. Recall that there was a zoning administrator concurrent action that granted increased glory, which allows for increased density. And this design, while it may not be technically an impact for the shade, shadow, and privacy issues under CEQA, is a consideration for good planning practice in the deputy advisory agency's review of the tract. Our client has asked very reasonably that the project be modified by moving the tower element northerly it would resolve these issues. To date, that hasn't happened. That's why we're still here asking for it. And we'd like to request that it be done now so that this would work for both properties. And that is something that can be done by the city. Therefore, we request that you deny the project that's currently proposed. Thank you for the time. All right, now we have the applicant for three minutes or less. Mr. Chair, uh, we're, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but this item has two appeals. I think we heard from one from uh, Mr. Benji and then the other one from the Supporters Alliance of Environmental Responsibility. Okay, thank you. Um, excuse me, uh, I'm the uh, representative, Victoria Young, for uh, Supporters Alliance for Environmental Responsibility. Can I please have my three minutes? So, I'm sorry, staff, the previous attorney. The person, hold on, hold on. So I'm trying to just find out who's, who just spoke. Mr. Chair, I believe that was the representative of the first appellant. Oh, okay, so they got more minutes. Okay, so uh, the Supporters Alliance for Environmental Responsibility will give you some additional time uh, since the other side got additional time. You can start now. Uh, okay, you can 
supporters of Alliance for Environmental Responsibility can speak now. Victoria Yant, please press star six to mute yourself. Good afternoon. My name is Victoria Yan. I'm an attorney at Lizzo Jury, and I'm speaking on behalf of Supporters Alliance for Environmental Responsibility, or SAFER. SAFER requests that Plum approve SAFER's appeal and refrain from approving the SIA and the SIA addendum for the proposed Main Street Tower project until an EIR is prepared for the project, or at least until all feasible mitigation measures are included for the proposed project based on two issues. First, the SIA fails to incorporate all feasible mitigation measures for air quality included in the 2016 to 2020 and 2020 to 2045 Regional Transportation Plan and Sustainable Community Strategy Program EIR. For example, the 2020 to 2045 Program EIR requires that a project use Tier 4 final equipment or better for all engines above 50 horsepower. Neither the SIA nor the addendum to the SIA require Tier 4 equipment, nor do either of the documents provide an adequate justification justification for not requiring Tier 4 equipment. Second, the CS conclusion regarding the project's less than significant air quality impact is not supported by substantial evidence for several reasons. First, the CS fails to discuss and mitigate significant health risks posed by formaldehyde. The CS fails to discuss, disclose, analyze, and mitigate the significant health risks posed by the project from formaldehyde, a toxic air contaminant and carcinogenic. SAFER's indoor air quality expert conducted a review of the project and found that the project's future residents and employees will be exposed to a cancer risk from formaldehyde of approximately 120 per million and 17.7 per million, respectively, exceeding the South Coast AQMD's significant threshold of 10 per million. It also should be noted that the CIA failed to analyze any impact to indoor air quality or the associated health risks whatsoever. Next, the CIA cannot be relied upon to determine the significance of the project's air quality impacts because the air model underestimated the project's construction and operational emissions. Lastly, the SIA inadequately analyzed the project's impact on human health from emissions of diesel particulate matter on nearby sensitive receptors. Based on the expert environmental consulting firm Swade's health risk analysis, the excess cancer risk from DPM for the third trimester of pregnancy, infants, children and adults in a residential lifetime exceeds the South Coast AQMD threshold of 10 and 1 million. Specifically, Swig found that the excess cancer risk at a sensitive receptor located approximately 50 meters away over the course of the project construction and operation are approximately 15.1 and 1 million for the third trimester of pregnancy, 366 and 1 million for infants, 134 and 1 million for children, and 13.1 and 1 million for adults. Moreover, the excess cancer risk over the course of a residential lifetime, which is considered 30 years for project operation and construction, is approximately 518 and 1 million. Based on these numbers, it was concluded that the cancer risk to third trimester fetuses, infants, children, adults, and lifetime residents vastly exceed the South Coast AQMD threshold of 10 and 1 million, thus indicating a significant air quality impact. Given the substantial evidence of significant health risk impact and air quality impact from project emissions, the city should prepare an EIR that includes a health risk analysis. That concludes my comments. Thank you for your time and consideration this afternoon. All right, now we'll hear from the applicant. Uh, will the applicant, uh, you'll have uh, five minutes to speak. Tanner Blackman, please press star six to unmute yourself. Tanner Blackman on behalf of the project, um, but actually Damon Mamalekis from Arm Brewster Goldsmith and Delvac will be speaking. He also was an identified speaker for the project. So you have five minutes. You all can chop it up any way you like. Damon, please press star six to unmute yourself. Good afternoon, council members. Damon Namalakis, Armbruster Goldsmith, and Delbach representing the applicant. Um, I'll, I'll keep my remarks very short. Staff did an excellent job in their written response to the appeal, documenting the fact that all of the issues that have been raised in both appeals are issues that have been raised numerous times preceding this hearing and have been fully addressed with the um, various response to comments and technical analyses all demonstrating that they are with absolutely no merit. I mean, most significantly is the repeated claim that a health risk assessment needs to be prepared for this project. 
In fact, a health risk assessment was prepared its appendix I to the ski addendum. Um, I also submitted a letter yesterday that responded to the two additional letters um, on behalf of Appellant United Broadway. Those were just, again, recycled letters with a, a new date from six months. Um, and the comments of Mr. Cameron Benji made today were also recycled comments that have been fully addressed. Um, with that, I would you know, recommend that you accept staff's recommendation. Um, also in my letter, I did recommend or ask for a technical correction to the vesting tentative track map letter decision. There was a typographical error repeated twice on pages F2 and F3 that referred to the zone variants which we withdrew nearly a year ago. And with that, unless you have any questions for me, I conclude my comments. All right, do we have a representative from Council District 14? There he is. Gerald Gubaton, Council District 14. Our office recommends that the Plum Committee move to deny the appeals. Uh, the proposed project underwent three design meetings with the city's urban design studio. Uh, the project design was modified accordingly. Uh, the proposed project also fully complies with the downtown design guide. Uh, the site zoning does not impose any building height limits. Finally, the planning department staff has put on record responses to all the appeal points relative to the project's environmental review with which our office concurs. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gubatan. Uh, is there any discussion, questions, or comments from members of the committee? All right, seeing none, uh, Mr. Mejia, I will move that we deny the appeal and uh, both appeals and uh, uh, ask that you call, read the specific instructions to the record and call for a vote. Yes, sir. Uh, to deny the appeals filed by Cameron Benji, United Broadway LLC, and two, the second ap appeal by Supporters Alliance for Environmental Responsibility, thereby sustain the Planning Commission's recommendation to approve a vesting tentative track map for the merger of eight lots into one master ground lot, and in addition, the approval of the haul route to export 30,000 cubic yards of soil from the project site um, for the construction of a 30-story, 340 feet mixed-use building with 363 residential units and 12,500 square feet of ground floor commercial retail uses for the property located at 1123 through 1161 South Main Street and 111 West 12th Street, subject to the modified conditions of approval and as stated on the record at today's meeting by Ms. Choi from the City Planning Department. In addition, the applicant stated uh, in today's presentation that there were some typographical uh, corrections that are needed. Don't know if those really exist or not, so we can instruct the planning department to look for any typographical errors, if there are any, and to make those corrections before the item is submitted to the city council for consideration. I will call the roll. Mr. Uh, Harris Dawson. Yes. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez. Ms. Rodriguez, absent. Aye. Oh, she's here, duly noted. Uh, Ms. Jaroslavsky? Yes. Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Hutt? Yes. Uh, that's five members, and uh, that action carries, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. That takes us to item number nine. Item nine, it's a mitigated negative declaration, mitigated mitigation monitoring program, and related sequel findings, and a report from the North Valley Area Planning Commission. An appeal has been filed by um, Mr. Ja Jahansen uh, Kaboli Najid from the Roscoe Fallbrook Neighborhood Coalition, challenging the approval of the environmental clearance, the MND, for the redevelopment of an existing surface parking lot with three warehouse manufacturing buildings with two story heights not exceeding 40 feet, properties located at 22815 and 22825 West Roscoe Boulevard and CD12. All right, uh, we'll hear from Department of City Planning. Good afternoon, council members. Item nine involves a CEQA appeal of the determination made by the North Valley Area Planning Commission to approve a light industrial project um, located at 22815 to 22825 West Wasco Boulevard 
Um, the project involves a redevelopment of the parking lot into a 98,614 square foot light industrial complex consisting of three single story buildings rising to a maximum height of 40 feet, as was stated uh, by Mr. Mejia. The proposed development will provide uh, 262 parking spaces and result in a floor area ratio of 0 0.32 to 1. Planning submitted a response to the appeal in a letter to the council file dated March 2nd, 2023. As stated in the letter to the Plum Committee, the proposed project meets all zoning criteria, including those contained within the site's qualified queue condition. Additionally, the project has been adequately as assessed under CEQA with substantial evidence submitted into the record and through the project's mitigated negative declaration, case number ENV 2021-10328-MND. The North Valley Area Planning Commission unanimously voted to deny the appeal and approve the project with modified conditions to reduce trucking hours and require notification of DTSC's determination prior to any construction activity as recommended by Council District 12. Staff, re staff recommends that the Plum Committee deny the appeal and approve the project as was amended at that time. That concludes my presentation and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. All right, um, we'll now hear from the appellant or their representative for three minutes or less. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, um, before my three minutes starts, can I ask a question? Uh, yes. I would like to still reclaim my one minute of public comment although it's closed oh, because I oh, feel oh, like oh, it was oh, my oh, right oh, to actually oh. do that. You have three minutes. After this. Your three after minutes this. is starting now. Your three okay. minutes is starting now. Okay. You're done after that. Dear, dear, council, dear council members, you have all the documentation from the previous appeal to NVAPC um, and our position is in order of priority as follows. The EIR certified in 2007 is outdated, therefore inconsequential. Despite numerous concerns raised by environmental experts and the residents about <clears throat> the inadequacy of the MND, the project has moved forward. Many environmental nature, uh, natural factors have impacted this EIR. Examples are impacts from Woolsey Canyon fire, minor seismic events in the area, droughts, and heavy rain runoffs, demonstrating that the contamination has migrated off the original site. As such, our major, major concern continues to be the 16-year-old EIR and the fact that it does not take into account the environmental impact since 2007, and therefore it's invalid. The site has previously been occupied by companies such as Rocketdyne, Hughes Missile System, Raytheon, and um, that conducted uh, defense-related R&D. It's no wonder that it has been identified as a brownfield and a Superfund site, which shows contamination exists. Our group has contacted DTSC, and we were told the project site is not covered in the cleanup agreement between the Raytheon and DTSC. This, even though the contaminated well CM10 is located exactly on the site. In addition to the hazard created by the aerospace industry, we need you to recognize the additional pollution, traffic, and safety issues brought up by having the large quantity of tractor trailer bricks invading our quiet community. The number of truck trips is conservatively estimated by a developer at 45 per day. In the notice to the appellants, while the city includes the 262 parking spaces, they failed to mention the 10 big rig truck docks and the additional problem in pollution it would bring. As you know, the EPA states that the particle pollution, particle pollution, the particle pollution kills people with diesel emissions being the largest contributor. Please keep in mind that our city of LA is the fifth city in the nation affected by it. Impact on the quality of life of the residents has not been adequately addressed by the city or the developer. The development will have no positive outcome for the community. It is strictly for the profit of the developer at our expense. LA city policies regarding compatibility of the warehouses with surrounding residential neighborhood area has been ignored. The developer has misrepresented the location of the proposed warehouse with respect to the surrounding single family homes. For the record, it is surrounded on three sides by thousands of single family homes and the Chatsworth uh, WNR on its north side. The developer has misrepresented receiving an approval from the West Hills Neighborhood Council and has erroneously stated that they have this approval. We are urging you as our elected reps to stop this injustice. Approving this development with as many possible consequences ignores the health and safety of the residents and is not in the interest of the community. You might be aware that several city councils in the Inland Empire, such as Pomona, Chino, Redlands, Narco, and Carlton, have unanimously voted to halt the construction of warehouses in order to study the, industrial, the industry's environmental impact on their city. So please, we urge you again, consider our concerns and stand with us on the side of your constituents and their communities well being. This is what... Thank you so much. Uh, we're now here from the applicant.
Brad Rosenheim, please press star six to unmute yourself. Good afternoon, uh, committee members. My name is Brad Rosenheim. I'd like to uh, turn this over to Brady McChain, the counsel for the applicant. Brady McShane, please press star six to unmute yourself. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Brady McShane. I'm a land use attorney at Greenberg Charig and registered lobbyist representing the applicant. As mentioned by staff, this project complies with the site's limited industrial land use designation and TQ M1-1 limited industrial zone, which permit the development of a light industrial warehouse use up to 180,000 square feet of floor area 45 feet tall and with 40 foot setbacks. At approximately 98,000 square feet, the project is 45% smaller in size than what is permitted by the underlying zoning. Incorporates extensive setbacks along Fallbrook Avenue and Roscoe Boulevard that are approximately 250% to 360% larger than the zoning requires. And dedicates approximately 35% of the property to landscaping, including extensively landscaped perimeter buffers along Fallbrook Avenue and Roscoe Boulevard. Further, the project has interior loading bays that are shielded from residential uses and all loading and unloading activities are confined to inside the building. The project limited the daytime truck deliveries only as required by the queue conditions and further conditioned by the APC. And all truck deliveries are required to take primary access from Roscoe Boulevard, which is a Boulevard two in the Mobility 2035 plan. Subject appeal fails to provide substantial evidence of any impacts whatsoever, let alone significant impacts. We addressed the present appeal in our response letter, which you have in your packet, and it's clearly established at the APC hearing. Any and all of the issues raised have been thoroughly addressed in the ISMND and detailed responses to comment on the ISMND previously prepared by INVICOM. They were also addressed in my prior legal letter responding to the APC appeal and in the city's determination approving the project. For example, the ISMND traffic study demonstrates that project vehicle miles will be less than the applicable North Valley Area Planning Commission significance threshold, and traffic impacts will be less than significant. The ISMND noise analysis quantitatively demonstrates that the project's anticipated construction and operations noise levels will not exceed city noise level thresholds, and thus will be less than significant. The ISMND's air analysis and project-specific health risk assessment demonstrate that project construction and operation would not expose residents to substantial air pollutant concentration or otherwise result in a significant health risk. And the ISMD hazardous materials analysis demonstrates that based on prior sampling results conducted under the oversight of the regional water board and DTSC, there is no evidence of contamination on the project site and thus disturbance of the site during construction will not release hazardous materials into the environment. In conclusion, the city and its consultants have thoroughly analyzed and addressed all public comments there's no substantial evidence of any impact, and the ISMND fully complies with CEQA. Accordingly, we respectfully request that the council deny the appeal and adopt the ISMND. We're available uh, for any follow-up questions, and thank you for your time. All right, uh, Council Member Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, colleagues, the proposed project uh, before us today concerns three new light industrial buildings on seven acres of a larger 80 acre site in the West Hills community in my district. Uh, the site has a 50 year history where notable aerospace contractors such as Hughes Aircraft and Raytheon engaged in aerospace research and development on portions of the property and was subsequently developed with a light industrial office park and campus. In 2009, to bring the site into conformance with the already established uses, agriculturally zoned portions of the overall site were approved for limited industrial use through a general plan amendment zone change. A conditional use for hours and uses and a required site plan review for all future development, including the subject site for this project. An EIR was prepared and certified. There was extensive community involvement, which resulted in a number of conditions that restricted allowed, uh, that restricted allowed uses and operations. And those conditions continue to exist today and will obviously apply to this project. 
My staff and I have been working with the appellant, Mr. Caboli, and others throughout this process, and I know that the community continues to be concerned about the environmental clearance for the current project, specifically the lack of the preparation of an EIR. Uh, we've heard response from planning staff on the CEQA appeal, but I wanted to take a moment to address the concerns that underlie the appeal itself. The State Department of Toxic Substance Control, DTSC, the regulatory agency that oversees uh, remediation activities uh, for contaminated sites, issued a letter in 2008 during the previous EIR process, providing guidance for the requirements and process for contaminant testing and review, if determined by DTSC at, to be necessary. The conditions of approval for this current case uh, not only incorporate those conditions included in the 2008 DTSC letter, but in fact include additional conditions that provide even more specificity, uh, uh, specificity about the soil sampling process prior to the issuance of any building permits by the city. And also prior to previous appeals before the North Valley Area Planning Commission this past December, my planning staff met with DTSC officials to confirm that the 2008 letter remains in full force and effect to expand on the protective soil sampling conditions already included, the APC granted my request to impose an additional condition to ensure that DTSC's determination is submitted for city review and accessible to the public. While the zoning approved in 2009 allows this project to be developed, I have heard the community's underlying concerns and my priority has been to ensure that the city does the utmost to incorporate the proper safeguards for the protection of the community. I would really like to thank the department uh, for all their work on this issue, but uh, I really like to thank the community uh, of West Hills and the people who live around this uh, project uh, for continuing to work with my office to make sure that strong conditions that we work together on will ensure that conditions of approval are followed prior to the issuance of any building permits. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Lee. Uh, so Mr. Lee has moved that we did not. Any other discussion on this item? All right. Uh, with that, uh, so we have a motion from Mr. Lee uh, that I'll second and Mr. Mejia, if you can call the roll. Yes, so the recommendation is to deny the appeal and uh, sustain the North Valley Area Planning Commission's determination to approve the environmental clearance, the mitigated negative de declaration. I will call the row. Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Aye. Ms. Jarostowski. Yes. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Hutt. Yes. That's uh, five members and that uh, appeal is denied. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lee. That moves us to item number 10. Item 10, sir, and committee members, a categorical exemption on the CEQA findings and appeal filed by Friends of Walter Way, uh, challenging the Board of Building and Safety's commissioner's approval of an application to export 2,800 cubic yards of earth and uh, the approval of the environmental clearance the categorical exemption from CEQA. This appeal has been withdrawn and a letter has been submitted by the um, appellant's representative, Mr. Jamie Hall. That uh, communication has been uploaded to the council file, council file 22-1527, and it is dated March the 6th, withdrawing that appeal again. So the action of the committee uh, will be to deny the appeal and thereby sustain the Board of Building and Safety's commissioner's approval of the haul route to export the 2,800 cubic yards of earth and the environmental clearance, the categorical exemption for CEQA for the property at 666 and 672 Walter Way in CD 11. So moved, uh, please call the roll. Yes, sir, Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Ms. Rodriguez. 
Aye. Ms. Jaroslawski? Yes. Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Hutt? Yes. That's five members, and that action carries to deny the appeal. All right, thank you so much. Text to item number 11. Item 11 is a categorical exemption from CEQA related findings and report from the planning department and appeal by Catherine Shore relative to the approval of the environmental clearance, a categorical exemption from CEQA for a transit oriented communities project that will construct 27, a 27 unit residential building with three units reserved for extremely low income households. Properties located at 2456 through 24. 60 South Purdue Avenue in Council District 13. All right, well, we'll have our uh, first report overview from Department of City Planning. Hi, good afternoon, Council members. I'm Nora Lee Martinez from, plan from the Planning Department. Item 11 is a sequel appeal of a transit oriented communities project for a residential building in Palms, Mar Vista, Del Rey, and Council District 11. The project will remove two existing single family dwellings and develop a six story 27 unit residential building, including three uh, extremely low income income units on a site that is near the Expo Sepulveda station. The project was determined to be categorically exempt from the CEQA pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15332 as a class 32 infill development and to be within the scope of the exposition corridor transit neighborhood plan program EIR pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15168 and 15162. The TOC incentives and program EIR are not before PLUM for consideration. What is before PLUM is the CEQA appeal of the class 32 categorical exemption. The CEQA appeal was filed by an aggrieved party who raised several appeal points in opposition to the project. The staff transmitted to council file an appeal response dated March 2nd, 2023, with response, responses to the appeals points raised. However, we would like to highlight a few for your attention. The appellant states that the CEQA exemption as adopted conflicts with the Palms Mar Vista del Rey community plan. However, the site is zoned R3-1 and designated for medium residential, which allows for the proposed project in combination with the TOC incentives as provided in, in the appeal response. The project is consistent with the community plan and exposition corridor transit neighborhood plan. The appellant contends that the project meets the exception to CEQA guidelines pursuant to section uh, 15300.2 and that the project will have an adverse commutative impact. However, the appellant has not presented substantial evidence of such impact. Therefore, planning staff recommends that Plum deny the CEQA appeal and determine based on the whole of the administrative record that the project exempt from CEQA pursuant to CEQA guidelines as a class 32 infill development and that there is no substantial evidence demonstrating that the exception to a categorical exemption applies. That concludes staff presentation and we're available for any questions. Thank you so much. Uh, right, we'll hear for for the from the appellant for three minutes or less at this time. Catherine Shore, please press star six to unmute yourself. Hello, um, I'm speaking in response to uh, number 11. Um, the standard of review based on the letter of determination is capricious and not supported by CEQA in any way. CEQA requires the class 32 exemption to meet certain conditions, namely include facts, reasonable assumptions predicated on facts and expert opinion supported by facts, as well as the project must be consistent with applicable general and local plans community plan. This project is 22 feet taller than the maximum height in this R3-1 zone. We are also a single family home surrounded by a single family home designated houses at the end of the street. Um, this to state that the project meets the Mar Vista Community Del Rey plan is absurd. I will in lack of transition scale density and character 
is part of that lack of adequate parking. There's 27 units with 26 parking spots. Some of these units have five bedrooms. This uh, open space required from the Mar Vista, there is no open space. There are balconies, there is no open space. The recreational areas, there are no recreational areas. There's just individual um, balconies. And as far as the cumulative impact, I did state in the appeal, and I feel um, that the communal of impact according to CEQA is um, that the project incremental effects through individually limited is cumulatively considerable. Um, the city says that the tier, because of overlaying the, the city, only 3% of the entire city of Los Angeles has to suffer with tier three and four because of, of other zoning. So to say that these huge buildings with increased far and decreased side yards and front yard setbacks that are being put in one three percent of the entire city because of other overlaying doesn't have a cumulative effect is absurd. And that argument that it, it follows the general plan as well as the local plan is not true. And that the POC guidelines don't supersede that as the city found out in the Wilkins case recently, the city lost that argument on, in August of 2022, stating that the TOC guidelines have precedent over community plans like the Palm Mar Vista Del Rey plan. And in fact, they don't. And in so many instances, this project in no way complies with the local um, community plan. Its size, its scale, its lack of open space, the TOC projects are basically deforestation. We have one on the street. The street already is so small, you have to pull over in order for a car to go by. This is, there's not, none of the CEQA guidelines are, should be avoided or, bit, or nullified. This appeal, this, the project needs to be reduced in scale. I'm not saying it doesn't need to be, you can build a project there, but this project is not in keeping with the community plan in any way. And its cumulative effects, as with the building across the street from it, TOC building, and the other maybe 30 or 40 projects only in this area, because this area somehow is the only area where tier three and four are allowed. And this area is a very low density single family. There's single family homes at the end of the street. There's single family homes all the way to the west side. So to say that this huge building with outside yard setbacks, without parking, um, is going to comply with our community plan is absurd. And to say that I didn't state that in my appeal, I feel is um, not, not, not a represent, positive representation of what I was saying. Um, and I feel that it's, I'm not anti-construction. I own a four unit across the street, but I feel that the, that the city has been um, lax. I think the commission and the plum committee, the previous plum committee obviously was not as, uh, well, anyway. Uh, I feel that this project should not be able to be built at its size and scale. And um, that's my time. Thank you, Speaker. Our applicant. Aaron Belliston, please press star six to unmute yourself. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and honorable council members. My name is Aaron Belliston with BMR Enterprises, representative of the project and its owner, Amir Medizadeh. Um, we appreciate the appellant uh, bringing careful and thoughtful consideration to the project review. However, we're requesting a denial of the appeal and seeking your support for the furtherance of the project approval and the detailed work done by the planning department, namely Norley Martinez and Connie Cho, when reviewing the project initially, then again at the city planning commission appeal, and then most recently in their written recommendations 
which were detailed and thorough for today's uh, in preparation for today's proceedings. The appellant has failed to provide substantial evidence on any of the multiple points that they raised. We appreciate the feelings and concerns she's demonstrated, but they do not meet the threshold of substantial evidence. Whereas the categorical exemption was prepared based on technical environmental studies, was supported by facts and substantial evidence, all of which are available in the administrative record. This is a Housing Crisis Act project with affordable housing components, meets the requirements of the TOC project, and uh, is proximate to transit, which is precisely where the density belongs. We look forward to your support. I won't take any more of your time, but I'm available for any follow-up questions, and I thank you for the time. All right, uh, do we have a representative from Council District 11? Good evening. Good evening, honorable fund members. This is Jeff Cow reporting for Council District 11, the office of Councilwoman Tracy Park. With regard to item number 11, a CEQA appeal for a 27 unit residential development, our office will not be taking a position on this project. Thank you for your time. All right, uh, any uh, discussion on uh, this item for members of the committee? or any further comments from the Department of City Planning? All right, seeing none, I'm going to move uh, that we deny the appeal with uh, specific instructions. Uh, Mr. Mejia, that I'll ask you to read into the record and uh, call the roll if there's no further discussion. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair and committee members, to deny the appeal filed by Catherine Shore and thereby sustain the Planning Department's determination to approve the project's environmental clearance the categorical exemption from CEQA for a proposed transit-oriented communities project for the construction of a new 27-unit residential building, three units reserved for extremely low-income households for the property located at 2456 through 2460 South Purdue Avenue in CD11 and as stated on the record at today's meeting by the city planner, Norali Martinez. I will call the roll, Mr. Chair. Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Ms. Rodriguez. Absent. Ms. Jaroslawski. Yes. Um, Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Hutt. Yes. That's uh, four members and that appeal is denied. All right, thank you so much. Uh, that takes us to item number 12. Item 12, sir, this is a categorical assumption from CEQA and related findings and a report from the Planning, the Planning Commission and an appeal by Manuel Martinez relative to the Planning Commission's determination in approving the plan approval for the continued use and operation of a campus with three charter schools in the suburban zone and modifications to certain conditions inclusive of increased enrollment for the property located at 13351 through 133. 77 North Glen Ox Boulevard, subject to modified conditions of approval in CD7. Uh, thank you so much. We'll uh, start our discussion on the siding with a report from the Department of City Planning. Uh, you're on mute, I think. I think I hear see you talking, but I don't hear you. There you go. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Sarah Hounsel, project planner for the plan approval before you under case number CPC 2013 1495CU-PA1-2A, located at 1335 and 13377 North Glen Oaks Boulevard in the Silmar Community Plan. The site is located on a 7.3 acre campus with single family residential located to the north across Glen Oaks Boulevard, abutting on the south and the east, fronting Defoy Avenue and Cobalt Street and vacant land on the east. The plan approval granted the continued operation of the site for three public charter schools in the RA 1-K zone, modifying operating conditions and the consideration of a categorical exemption from CEQA in accordance with section 15301 class one issued by the Department of City Planning on June 17th, 2021. Modified conditions included increase of 50 additional students limiting the total maximum enrollment to 1300, allowing for 20 on-site bicycle parking spaces, 
adding traffic and parking monitor conditions, allowing rental and third party vendors, allowing extended hours of third party uses and CIF league events, extended delivery hours by one hour to start at 6 a.m., changed compliant report submittals to every two years and adding additional shade trees. Two appeals were subsequently filed, which were denied by the City Planning Commission on March 15th, 2022. A second level appeal to the City Council was filed by Manuel Martinez on March 29th, 2022. Appeal and points included permitted monitoring compensation for rental events, other than school functions on weekends and off hours, concerns with noise, traffic, and parking, trash co collection with reverse beeping sounds at 6 a.m., music from the lunch area, lack of sidewalks in the neighborhood except adjacent to the campus, drop-off and pickup lines in some 500 feet long around 7,000 automobiles with both a.m. and p.m. hours, and accidents at the corner of Cobalt and Glen Oaks which needs to be signalized for student safety. It is to be noted that there is a DOT approved stoplight at Cobalt and Glen Oaks intersection. However, the city funding has not been allocated to date. Significant limitations for the school have been placed on third party rentals, regulating hours, activities, and parking. Puck will oversee complaints of each event. Puck is required to submit a report for planning detailing compliance with the condition every two years and is required to file a plan approval if any proposed changes of hours of operation, structures, enrollment, or other aspects of the school operation change. As the City Planning Commission found the conditions of approval and finding to be acceptable for the school expansion of use, staff recommends that the Planning and Land Use Committee consider the categorical exemption, deny the appeal, sustain the City Planning Commission's action of approving the plan approval, conditions of approval, and findings. Thank you. That concludes my presentation. I'm available to answer questions. Thank you so much for that report. Now we'll hear from our appellant, Mr. Martinez, for three minutes or less. Caller with the last four digits, 1325. Please state your name. Caller with the last four digits, 1325. Please announce yourself. Mr. Chair, the appellant has not called in. All right. Uh, do we have comments from the applicant? Yes. David Moss, please press star six to unmute yourself. Good afternoon, members of the committee. I am David Moss, the senior land use and environmental consultant representing public charter school. Uh, the pu public charter school, um, I'm here today with the three school principals, the CEO, Connie Brevis, and Dr. Jackie Elliott, the board chair. I respectfully request that the committee carry a motion to deny the appeal consistent with the unanimous 2021 City Planning Commission decision and the unwavering and technically meritorious opinions and documentation by staff, including by Blake Lamb, Claudia Rodriguez, and Sarah Hounsel. I do want to say that in deference to the neighbor appellant, the City Planning Commission appeal resulted in added community benefits and conditions beyond the 2016 CUP. There's 186 parking spaces clearly shown on the site plan, though 154 are required. There's also 40 overflow spaces for events. The LADLT scrutinized and updated a circulation plan that disallowed circulation along Cobalt Street, which is exactly what was requested by the appellant. LEDOT verified a traffic analysis that um, indicates that adding 50 students, a mere 4% enrollment increase does not result in unmitigated traffic and parking impact. I, I was um, a bit taken back by 
Sarah Hounsel's statement about I didn't understand the 7,000 daily trips, but I think that the trips completely in the neighborhood, the AM peak trips for this property, total 649. Included in the revised mitigation measures are relocation and limited hours for the trash pickup, clearly stated and enforceable limitations on events and third-party use, and a global comments response document that fully addresses prior staff comments and all nine appeal points, demonstrating that they've all been reduced to a level of insignificance and lack merit. The stoplight is supported by PUC, but as staff has noted in LADOT and planning, there is no nexus to require the PUC participate in its implementation. PUC's mission is to provide exemplary public education at 14 Los Angeles City campuses, and Glen Oaks is an amazing community resource. The three school campuses operated in relatively peaceful coexistence since 2016. The technical work of staff, as I said on this project, has been exemplary through three public proceedings. Please uphold the unanimous CPC decision supported by this unwavering support of senior staff in multiple departments. And we respectfully request on behalf of PUC schools to carry a motion for dismissal of the appeal and move this plan approval to the council to end a three-year entitlement odyssey to enhance the provision of public education. I'm here to answer questions that the committee may have and truly appreciate the opportunity to address you today. Thank you uh, for your comments. Uh, we will uh, now hear from Council Member Rodriguez if she is in the meeting. Yes. Can you yes. guys, can you hear me? Okay. So, you um, clearly, yes. Yeah, Mr. Mejia, if you could register me as an I vote on that last one for some reason, you guys weren't able to hear me. So, um, we'll do but uh, colleagues on this item, and I first want to thank uh, the members of the community that participated and uh, in the land use conversations with respect to our community. Uh, it is through these kind of active and engaging conversations that we were able to address uh, some of the mitigation measures that were reached uh, as part of this process. And so I wanna thank them for helping to uh, bring attention to some of the concerns. One of the common complaints that we've had in this community that has been received, not, not even just with respect to this project, but uh, even preceding the conversation is the concerns with respect to traffic and turns at the intersections of Cobalt and Glen Oaks. It's for, those com for that reason that last year in our budget cycle, I actually, it was misrepresented in the staff report, uh, but I actually secured the resources for uh, traffic uh, traffic control signal installation and improving the crossings at Cobalt and Glen Oaks. And that is about to commence design. Uh, it will begin this summer. And so I, I know, I recognize that there are uh, general circulation if issues uh, notwithstanding this project. And so uh, we've been diligent in addressing that and making sure that we are honoring that even through uh, some of the advocacy and work that I've done in the budgetary process. So that is also forthcoming, but uh, but colleagues with that, I actually, again, I, my thanks to the community for participating so often. Uh, they folks don't believe uh, our communities uh, will participate, but it's from that engagement that we actually derive uh, good compromises in this uh, in this plan. And so I'd like to recommend that we deny the appeal. And thank Excellent. you colleagues. Thank you so much, uh, Council Member Rodriguez. Uh, Mr. Mejia, uh, uh, Ms. Rodriguez has put forward a motion. So if there is no further discussion from other members of the committee, I'll ask that you call the roll. Uh, yes, so the recommendation therein is to deny the appeal by Manuel Martinez and sustain the Planning Commission's determination and approving, approving the plan approval and the environmental clearance, the categorical exemption uh, from CEQA and the conditions of approval, modified conditions of approval and findings as stated on the record by city planner, Sarah Hensel at today's meeting. I will call the roll. Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Aye. Ms. Yaroslavsky. Yes. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Hutt. Yes. That's five members and that appeal has been denied. Uh, for the record, Mr. Chair, for I the preceding item, item 11, Council File 230017, Ms. Rodriguez has asked to be 
add it uh, as a vote to that item, which will make it a unanimous 5-0. You're muted, Mr. Chair. I said uh, good without objection. That'll be the order. Thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Mejia, can you confirm that that concludes our business for today? It does, sir. Excellent. Thank you so much, everybody. We are adjourned. Thank you.